how we counter them is important. Because if we allow them and we, we give tolerance the way tolerance is defined today, it's full swing, then we won't challenge anybody. I would answer the question from a basic premise, from two basic premises. The first premise is this, uh, is that from a Christian perspective, all people, all people are made in God's image. All people, even those we very seriously and morally disagree with, are made in his image. Um, so that's the first thing. And I say that because the second premise is this, is that all people are equally deserving of compassion and respect unless they lose that, you know, respect in terms of a cultural respect, but all people are, 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 are equally um, ontologically equal, but the ideas they have are not. The ideas they have are not. Obviously there are some ideas that we ought to respond to, but I think that the way to avoid overcorrection is not to cancel those ideas out, but to deluge them with more substantive, and beautiful and morally praiseworthy speech. Um, so I think this is where the cancel culture loses, is that let's say there's something someone says, let's say it's a racist comment, and let's say they said it and it was completely uh, based on uh, a, a sort of a subconscious racism or an unconscious sort of statement that they've made all their lives, not even really, really realizing the context of it because they've been acclimated to a racist, uh, uh, to some racism, they happen to say something, they don't mean it in a racist way. Now that person gets canceled and they realize now that nothing I can possibly say can fix that. And so there's no redemption there. The cancel culture doesn't allow for any for form of redemption that someone can say, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry for what I've said. I never would have said it had I known what, what, what it meant. Or they did mean it and they come to realize the error of their ways. There's almost no coming back. There's no second chances in a cancel culture. Rather, when you overcome either ignorant or willfully immoral speech with something that is informed and willfully moral, I think you overcome that with ideas and the beauty of truth. And you don't try to drown out, but you do try to overcome. This is a biblical principle. The biblical principle is you don't return an insult for an insult and you don't overcome evil with evil, but you return evil with good. And at, at that point, I think that's how the conversation turns to what's beautiful and lovely and true and honorable, um, as opposed to a cancel culture, which signals a sense of fear. See, I think truth is not afraid of falsehood. I don't think truth is afraid of falsehood. I think falsehood is afraid of truth. But a cancel culture makes it look like the truth is afraid of the falsehood and will stomp it out at any given moment. I think that shows maybe the heart of those who are doing the canceling rather than the positions they hold. So yes, we can overcorrect. We certainly can by trying to stamp out illicit, uh, not illicit, but I'm sorry, but um, speech we find so aberrant. Um, a, a Nazi idea, for example, racism, sexism, these kind of things. These are ideas that ought to be countered. They have to be countered. But how we counter them is important. Because if we allow them and we, we give tolerance the way tolerance is defined today, it's full swing, then we won't challenge anybody and terrible ideas can fester. But the cancel culture takes ideas that are bad and puts them to the underground so you don't know who really believes them because everyone's afraid to say something until they have enough of a groundswell where they can cancel you. But a freedom of ideas where you're actually engaging in free speech and you shore up a good idea with as many good arguments and as many good facts and as much winsomeness as you can will eventually overshadow the false. I think that's the way to avoid overcorrection. Awesome, thank you for your uh, answer. Um, you talked about JK Rowling and obviously she's not, you know, she's not a, a professed believer. So how should the church <clears throat> respond to acts of people being canceled, um, especially, you know, when the person isn't, doesn't, hold to our, also our moral uh, standing and understanding. That's great. Um, I'm gonna borrow a, a line from uh, Oz Guinness, and I think, I think it's original to Oz. Uh, he would be able to clarify. He said, oftentimes the reason why some people groups, um, uh, whether it's Christians, non-Christians of various varieties, are often under suspicion because there's like a lobbying effect, like we're just interested in our own special interests, is because we constantly say we want justice, 
it will really mean just us. And if you, as a Christian, if you want to be consistent in your belief that truth wins the day and that, that people should be free to express themselves, if you want to have the freedom to express your convictions, not just worship in your house in a locked door where no one can see you, but actually publicly profess to be a Christian and live your life in a Christianly way, you have to allow for the fact that there's going to be people who can live and breathe and have their, their, their social being, as it were, in a way that's different and even antithetical to your beliefs. You have to allow for that. So when we see someone like, uh, whether it's J.K. Rowling or um, Richard Dawkins, for example, has been canceled uh, several times for his statements, who is uh, no stranger to the sort of ugly speech that comes against the Christian faith. When he is canceled or put out of um, the debate forums, Christians should stand up for him. We should stand up for him. Even though we don't agree with what he says, we should say, this is wrong. It is wrong to cancel somebody for those reasons. Um, because secular people have done it. I mean, I've seen secular people who are extremely antithetical to religion in terms of their speech, who when they hear people of religious persuasions who have been canceled or deplatformed, they stand up for the religious. And they're right to do that. I think as Christians, we can disagree with the message while allowing for the possibility that someone's message should be shared. Um, but we should always be able to, again, have that fundamental perspective of we can, we can love and pray for people, but not love their ideas. Because not all, not, not all, although all people are equal, not all ideas are.